Hello everyone. Welcome to Engineered Learnings. Engineered Learnings has been created as an effort to help and reach out to all the engineering students, aspirants and professionals out there with the basic understanding and the crux of the topics important for placements, vivas, semesters, competitive examinations and all types of interviews. So let's go to today's topic. Hello everyone, so welcome to today's video. So a lot of discussion has been going over the past few weeks about the interview. So I thought that uh, we should cover up uh, some more interview sessions, whatever experience I have in the interviews, maybe that will be of some help to some of the students, uh, whoever is watching this video. So today our uh, topic of discussion is Honeywell interview. Many of the chemical engineers do sit for uh, Honeywell UOP, that is Honeywell Universal Oil Products. Uh, it's a very big design consultancy basically. Uh, so Honeywell interview basically consists of uh, three main steps to be very precise. Firstly, there is a aptitude test which consists of technical as well as uh, general aptitude questions. Once uh, some amount of DILR and mostly uh, technical questions, many technical questions are there. Uh, so from there on some students are being selected and in some of the campus interviews, they do have uh, this CGPA criteria to screen students off in the first stage. In some of them, they do not have this criteria. But uh, when we were sitting, they didn't have any such criteria even for the internship or for the campus placement drive. But in some years, they did have that criteria. And after that, there is an aptitude test from where they screen on the students. And the second round is of the GD round. So for our GD, uh, we were given the topic of floods, whether they are man-made or natural. So very interesting topic actually in the GD. So as I've already mentioned that how you should approach the GD. So you should go about that very simply and calm and cool. And you should let the, let the others speak as well as keep your own point. Now, uh, once you clear the GD, you will reach to the final personal interview round. Now, there are two choices that you need to make in the on-campus placement drive. Like we were given to select between two profiles that Honeywell were offering back then. One was of uh, the field operative services. That is when you make a design and you have to implement that to start a plant up. Uh, to implement the design to start up a plant, uh, you will be there present on the field doing that activity to bring the design that is made on paper into reality that is starting the plant off and facing the situations uh, or the tough tax that come along with it. So uh, this is one profile and another profile is a design profile where you need to design the plant, design the pipelines and the other systems, uh, supposedly reactors, distillation columns and whatever is the desire of the situation or the ask of the hour in the industry, you need to design those. So apart from this, uh, broadly these two categories you need to select, either you need to go for the design profile or the FOS profile. Now the design profile has multiple aspects to it, multiple layers. The design has some in instrument procurement along with it, some instrument suggestion engineers are there, different posts are associated with it and field operative services as the name suggests it is on field duty so you need to implement that same design that is being made by the design engineer or the consultancy and you need to implement that into the plant whenever they are opting for one. So uh, basically you need to apply prior hand and you need to give a proper reason why you are applying for FOS that is field operative services or you are applying for design. Why is it so? Now uh, in the FOS that is field operative services, uh, the questions that they mainly ask are not much into the design aspects that is they will not ask you the detailed design of heat exchanger or the detailed design of distillation columns. What I was asked in the FOS interview was the NPSH of a pump. What is the significance of the NPSH of the pump? What is cavitation? How is it being dealt with? And uh, I was asked about the FCC unit. How does it look? You can refer to my previous video of FCC unit, how it works. That was being asked uh, since they have FCC units running in their plants. 
and uh, I was also asked from some petroleum grading like how was this petroleum bought from the industry, what are the gradings of it. They wanted to know what is API uh, for the petroleum that we buy. So these are the few things that they asked me in the interview. Mostly they look for credible candidates who can speak very well or communicate very well and can actually gel up in the market and help convince the customer that uh, Honeywell can implement a design on paper to a reality. So you need to be very active on field to be in that FOS or the field operative services profile. It's mainly a profile where they see your intuitiveness, where they see your communication skills along with your technical knowledge definitely. And design profile is mostly about how much technical knowledge you possess, whether you are being able to design the proper process, you know, the pro proper process mapping of the same. Uh, that is what they go for. Like in the design profile, people were asked to write down the steps of the design of a heat exchanger, write down the steps of design of a distillation column. Uh, fortunately, I got to face both the interviews. My CV was recommended. I opted for FOS, that is Field Operative Services Profile. It was later recommended to design profile as they thought that my profile is more suited for that uh, design purpose. So I got to face both the interviews in the design uh, interview that is for the design profile interview uh, they asked me my favorite subject when I told that my favorite subject is chemical technology they will ask me your favorite subject so you can go for heat or mass transfer. I love chemical technology personally so I opted for chemical technology the kind of questions they asked from chemical technology was uh, the different cuts of petroleum, what are their uses in the industry, specifically C13 and uh, C13 to C18, that is the Kero cut, and uh, C7 to C10, that is the heavy naphtha cut, what are these, what are the uses in the industry. So you can also refer to my previous video for that, uses of the petroleum cuts, that's also available in the channel. So these are the questions that uh, they asked in the design profile. Also they asked for the boiling ranges which I couldn't spot out like C1, what is the boiling range of C1, what is the boiling range of C2, you need to give those numerical figures which I couldn't because I didn't remember it. And uh, what went wrong, if uh, many would question what went wrong in the interview that I couldn't crack the interview. So what happened is uh, sometimes you tend to over express yourself. That is what exactly happened with me in the Honeywell interview. In the FOS profile, I tried to be way too technically sound because of which they felt that I was proper for the design profile because uh, they felt that the technical knowledge can actually actually be utilized in the design profile to uh, arrive to better results as far as the company is concerned. So they recommended me to the design profile but the design interview unfortunately he didn't want me to go to the interview at the beginning because the Candidates who had opted for the design profile first, their interviews were taken and at the end I was called up because I was recommended by the FOS guys. I didn't choose design in the first place. And the first question that arrived in the interview session was eventually that why did you choose FOS over design and why not design? Why do you want to go to field operative services? So basically it was a predetermined mindset that uh, he hasn't chosen design in the first place. So that is the, 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 those are the goof offs that you should avoid from my personal experience. You should be expressing as much as is the requirement of the hour. So if you can do well in the aptitude and you can do well in the GD, the PI also, you need to be a little technical sound for Honeywell PI and you don't need to goof off just like I did tending to over express myself. Those will be the advisors. These are the questions that I've already mentioned, the NPSH, the FCC, why and how is cavitation occurring, the petroleum APIs, uh, the cuts of petroleum, what are the uses of the cuts of petroleum, the boiling ranges of the cuts. These are a few things that they specifically asked in both the FOS and uh, the, uh, what do you call it, the design profile uh, sector. So, and one common question was there in both the sectors, FOS profile also, design profile also, uh, the head curve, that is head versus flow rate curve, uh, that is the pump characteristic curve and how do you get the operating point, pump operating curve and the characteristic curve. So you should learn a little bit more about the pumps. And if you're going for an internship uh, interview, pumps is what they basically ask because then uh, in the third year you are not exposed to subjects like uh, chemical technology, you are not much aware of it. 
even you're not much aware of heat transfer and mass transfer to that level as a fourth year guy knows in the third year basically we will be asked question from fluid mechanics only and pumps as you know is a very important part of fluid mechanics so whoever is sitting for the internship go and go prepared with the pump think very well that is npsh cavitation pump selection types of pumps all of this and whoever is going for the final interview if you are opting for the design profile go with uh, go prepared with uh, design steps of a heat exchanger design steps of the distillation column and do not tend to over express yourself because i've seen a couple of guys getting rejected because they told way too much and it was very clear that they were preparing for gate so they were obviously rejected because uh, they understood the interviews eventually made out that that candidate is preparing for gate so these are the few things that you need to keep in mind you need to be uh, sounding very convincing in your interview and you don't need to be over expressing yourself as i did so do not repeat that mistake and whoever is appearing for the internship interview or the final job interview all the very best crack the aptitude crack the gd bank the pi and bring it home and after the pi let me tell you after the technical pi uh, there is an hr pi there is a hr pi that goes on that is the hr will take your separate interview uh, that doesn't have much uh, things added up to it they will just see your eligibility whether you are eligible for the profile or not but that doesn't mean that uh, you cannot be rejected in the hr round i've seen candidates two or three of them getting rejected in the hr round as well one of my friends were there who got rejected in the hr round of funny well interview so you need to be careful there as well you need to convince them that you can go to field operative services you can go to design profile you are eligible for that if you are opting for field operative particularly these are the questions that's going to be asked whether you are ready to go to field ready to implement the plant whether you can convince the customer that you are doing well these are the things uh, whether your parents will allow you to go to uh, places outside india also because there are startup plans outside india plant startups that needs to be done outside india as well so having said that uh, you can actually crack it it's not that difficult they take quite uh, a number of candidates like in our year they took eight candidates three candidates uh, uh, got a ppo and five or six of them uh, bagged a on campus job and five of them on bagged a on campus and three of them got ppo so it was almost like eight candidates that they that hanivel took in our year that is 2018 so that's it that's it for today uh, if you liked our video like it share it with your friends subscribe to our channel thank you very much